What's going on everybody, Jolt here from the Token Minorities, and I am here with the makeup game of NPL Season 5, Week 6, against the Austin Toros, and the coach of this team is Carney Hobo, taking over for Robin Vart, and we just played these guys two weeks ago, so both of our strategies are relatively fresh in each other's heads, so it makes really this building and this game extra difficult. I think just in general for both of us because the matchup is very volatile. That is the only way to describe it as depending on what either of us bring, we can really put in a lot of work against each other's team and I feel on both of our ends it's impossible to prepare for everything. So uh, you know th this matchup's tricky, it's very tricky and <laughs> the trickiest part for me is that I had so much success against him in week 11 that uh, I'm inclined to want to bring the same team or close to it because it 5-0'd him really without much of a fight. Uh, so a lot of the sets that I brought last time around are probably going to also be utilized here in this team. Uh, but you know, just to go over briefly the matchup one more time in case you didn't see week 11 or you forgot what his team was, he is rocking Mega Scizor, Latios, Needle Queen, Tangrowth, Florges, Arganine, Hitmontop, Galvantula, Seismitoad, Braviary, and Greninja. While my team is my week, my uh, week six roster, which is a little bit different, so I'm rocking Starmie, Sylveon, Mega Venusaur, Darmanitan, Salamence again, Aerodactyl, Ditto, <laughs> and uh, Lantern, Pilus, Swine, Bronzong, and Lucario. So that's the team I'm working with. Now the implications of this game: if I win this game, I am in the playoffs and I win my division. If I lose this game, I am not in the playoffs. <laughs> so it's it's kind of an important game to say the least, but. I don't know. It, it's it's going to be a tough game. I already mentioned the reasons why, but I think the matchup's really hard for me, especially to have to play them twice. I think, obviously, one time around, I did very well against him the first time I played him, but once he has a feel for how I want to approach this team, it's very easy for him to counter that, and I felt like the approach I used last game was quite easily the best approach I could have possibly brought, and it's very hard to deviate from that. I did try, believe me, I did try, but everything I tried seemed to just get destroyed in practice battles. So uh, let's just go ahead and jump on over to the team I decided to actually bring here. Starting off with the Darmanitan, this is the exact same set as last time. It put in a nice sweep at the end of the last game, so no real reason to change it. I'm sure he'll prepare for it, but it's still really effective against him in general, so I have no real reason to change that up. And then next up is the Aerodactyl. This set I also brought last time, but I never had to, well, somewhat brought it last time. I also uh, never had to reveal it last time either, so I figured I could bring this lure again. Uh, this is essentially a Mega Scizor lure slash my counter to all forms of Braviary. The only issue being if Stealth Rocks are on the field, it's not particularly a counter, in which case I have no counters. I could bring something like Bronzong, I could bring something uh, like Lantern to help deal with the Braviary, but the fact remains that neither of those really seem to be good enough for the rest of his team to be effective in the matchup as they lost me a lot of momentum he was able to set up on both of them relatively easily I felt with other members of his team so I thought that Aerodactyl was the best way I could possibly approach this game that said if he does get up rocks and if he is able to start spamming Brave Birds there's not a whole lot I can really do outside of uh, let him wear himself down at a recoil if you recall back to last week when I faced against uh, Aberforth's Scarf Star Raptor that was the only way I could beat it as well I had to make it hit itself through recoil and and then put it in range of priority or pursuit and as you can see I do have pursuit on this as well to help with that again so it's it's kind of tricky the EVs are also kind of cool here as what I did here is I am outpacing a max speed adamant scarf braviary as well as a max speed greninja I believe braviary is a little bit faster with the scarf I cannot unfortunately outspeed a jolly scarf braviary unless I am choice scarf myself but that's simply not worth it considering I don't want to be setup fodder for mega scissor hence the Baberry berry with the flamethrower and this amount of investment allows me to always put a max HP mega scissor into range of my Lucario's close combat um, after taking a flamethrower. So that's the idea there. I don't want to have to lean on the inaccuracy of Blaze Kick, which I'll talk about here soon. Uh, and if I'm able to lure in the Lucario, or lure in the Scizor, get damage off with flamethrower, then that's pretty good for me. Then I have Pursuit for the Latios, as that's a pretty massive threat outside of Sylveon. And not just pretty massive, it's any, just an enormous threat. <laughs> I do not want to do with Latios if I don't have to. Uh, and Pursuit plus Sylveon, hopefully, will be able to take care of that. 
Stone Edge for obvious reasons, the Braviary, and Roost to make sure this is actually a counter. Uh, the defense investment allows me to survive certain hits from the Braviary as well, so that's pretty cool. And then we have the Lucario. This is just an adamant set. Outpaces max speed Needle Queen. Uh, I believe that is correct. I don't think it's out speeding any. Yeah, I think that's what I'm creeping on this. And the coverage here, I switched around a lot. I could have brought something like Earthquake to hit the combination of Needle Queen Arcanine a little bit harder. I opted for Ice Punch instead of Earthquake as I really felt that I needed that extra check to Latios as I am running Thunder Wave on my Starmie, which we'll see here soon, and I feel I might actually need that as a backup, essentially. Uh, but then I have E-Speed just to hit his fast things pretty hard. He has the Greninja with Torrent, which is really annoying to deal with. And Latios as well. Just all these things he has are so hard to prepare for. And Blaze Kick, of course, for the Mega Scizor in close combat, which is pretty spammable against this team. And the Air Balloon, of course, I have to mention. I'm bringing Air Balloon because Sticky Web is a threat. And uh, this is also nice in case he brings Spike Stack Greninja, as I really don't deal with his Hazard Stack options very well with this particular team. Again, it just kind of goes back to what I'm actually expecting him to bring. I don't really expect Hazard Stack. He might bring Sticky Web, uh, but you know, it's nice to have the Air Balloon, of course, for the Sticky Web, and it spikes if he decides to bring that, but more importantly, Sticky Web. And this will allow me to have a nice all-around uh, Revenge Killer slash Wall Breaker to maybe put some holes in his team. So then we have the Sylveon. Pretty standard spread here. I do have Hidden Power Fire to make sure Mega Scizor cannot set up on me for free. If it does set up, then the HP Fire I will guarantee put him in range of close combat from Lucario again, as well as in range of, I believe in range of Skull from Starmie as well, which is pretty nice for sure, and the rest is pretty standard there. My dedicated Latios counter and HP Fire was really the best way to use Sylveon otherwise. Then we have the Mega Venusaur, same exact set as last time. This is a, uh, basically my switch in to Nidoqueen, um, which, it's not the best switch in to Nidoqueen either. That's the problem. I really wanted to run Giga Drain, but I could not fit it on this, on this set. As if I run Giga Drain, HP Fire, Sludge Bomb with Synthesis, I am set up fodder for a bulk up Braviary, bulk up Spideff Braviary, which is what I anticipate him bringing if he does bring Braviary. And if he, let's see, if I run this set, then I can't hit Nidoqueen for anything harder than a Hidden Power Fire plus Leech Seed damage. So if he's like a Leftovers variant, maybe even an Assault Vest there, I guess Assault Vest I can handle pretty well, but if he's Leftovers, which is quite possible honestly, then this is not great against Nidoqueen, as he's going to be able to switch in, get up his rocks or T-Spikes or whatever he's wanting to do, essentially for free, and all he really takes is a little bit of damage from Leech Seed minus Leftovers plus a Hidden Power Fire here and there. So it's not really the best response to Nidoqueen, but it's all I have. So uh, we're just going to have to deal with it. I could bring something like Bronzong, but he's going to pack Flamethrower for that almost certainly. I'm expecting Flamethrower, Earth Power, and Sludge, wa sludge Wave, uh, but if he doesn't bring Earth Power, then my Air Bloom uh, Lucario can actually wall it pretty well, which is nice, but I do expect Flamethrower, unfortunately meaning that Bronzong is not a counter, uh, so, you know, it's it's tough, it's tough, but uh, that's about all there is to say on this, this is also just nice for eating up hits from Galvantula and Greninja and such, and then we have this thing, the Starmie with White Herb, again, I brought this set basically in week 11, but I'm running Thunder Wave instead of Grass Knot this time, as I don't really expect him to try to bring Seismitoad, as uh, it really wasn't too effective against me last time, he could still bring it, but I find it a little bit unlikely, plus, the most common initial switch into Starmie is Greninja, so I do want to be able to Thunder Wave the Greninja and make my job a little bit easier, maybe take a little pressure off of Lucario to be around to extreme speed. So uh, the defense investment here does allow me to always survive an Adamant Scarf, Braviary's Brave Bird from full health. That does not account for Stealth Rock, so I need to make sure, well, I guess this is my spinner, so it's not really <laughs> great for that either, I guess, in hindsight. But uh, as long as, as long as this like Jolly Scarf Braviary, which is what he has to be to outspeed Aerodactyl, then I should be able to take the Brave Bird after Stealth Rock damage. So uh, the Scald Ice Beam, general coverage, Ice Beam allows me to hit the Latios hard, uh, and Scald is just nice in general for the burns if I happen to get those. So that is the team. Let's go ahead and hop on over to the battle real quick. And uh, here we are. So he brought Arcanine, Braviary, Scizor, Mega Scizor, that is, Greninja, Torrent, uh, Hitmontop, and Nidoqueen. So he brought... Uh, I guess five of the thing, five of the things he brought make a lot of sense. Hitmontop does not. Uh, I would have expected to see Latios in the Hitmontop slot, actually, but... The rest of what he brought is really threatening. Looking at the general team design, I really do think that this is going to be a bulk up Braviary, as it, it just makes a lot of sense that he'll want something like this to try to break down my fat stuff so that he can try to uh, do a lot of damage with Life Orb, Needle Queen, and uh, maybe even Life Orb, Greninja, even if this is an offensive Arcanine. All those would really benefit from a bulk up Braviary breaking down my team a little bit. 
So that is what I'm expecting here. And that's how I'm going to play around this thing uh, initially. But in terms of the lead matchup, my best lead is always Mega Venusaur against this team because I need to be Mega Evolved to be a counter to the Needle Queen. And I shouldn't even say counter, to be able to switch in against the Needle Queen, as I don't have any other true switch ins, especially if he's carrying Flamethrower for the Lucario. So uh, that's that's kind of the situation there. So let's just go ahead and hop right on into this battle as I have the sound on, so forgive me for that, and let's try that again. So, I'm going to lead up with Mega Venusaur as he leads off with his Hitmon top, and uh, this can't do anything to me, so I'm just going to stay in and click Leech Seed as he can go into anything. If he goes into Braviary, then that might give me a little bit of an opportunity to scout out its set, maybe by going straight into my Aerodactyl, knowing that with the Leech Seed up especially, he has no chance to do it KO me. Uh, but he does just go hard to his Nidoking, which is fine. It probably means he's going for Stealth Rock, though, which is kind of unfortunate, but I cannot risk going straight into my Star me in case he is a uh, in, in case he is I believe life orb I don't think he'd reveal the life orb yet he might have but um, or the leftovers yet but regardless he does get his rocks up with the Needle Queen and uh, then just starts firing out some sludge waves and the damage calc on that was kind of interesting as that was actually like a max <laughs> like actually it was beyond max according to the showdown calc the most he could do was like 33.8 and it was registering is 33.9 percent so i thought that was kind of intriguing as <laughs> that's that's not possible but you know showdown is not exactly like the showdown damage calcs I should say the damage calcs like the showdown percentages that they show in the chat are not always accurate they round a lot and i believe that should probably be changed because that did impact some plays here unfortunately but uh i do let's see i go for the leech sheet again i'm kind of just spamming leech sheet expecting him to eventually want to go into braviary that just makes a lot of sense here here i finally click synthesis and he gets me by going into braviary so nice play on his end i guess i should have clicked it one more time but even so i don't think it really would have made a difference on this play as i go into my aerodactyl and he just fires off the Brave Bird, and I see that it does 50%. So this is either Max Attack Jolly or Max Attack Adamant, and I don't know which one, because if Jolly, that was a maximum roll with the Braviary as well. Now, why is this important? <clears throat> um, so I'm at 26%, as you can see. And essentially, if I calced him to be a Jolly Braviary, then I know he outspeeds my Aerodactyl. Okay, so if he outspeeds my Aerodactyl, then I potentially could have made a switch here into Sylveon, knowing that I can take two hits and eventually Wish Protect and get back up to full health, uh, which would have been a nice play, basically, in my opinion, I think it would have been a nice play, but um, essentially what happens here, because I'm thinking he's adamant, I'm going to stay in and click Stone Edge. Obviously, it's more likely for him to be Jolly, but... I can't exactly take a max roll from a potential Jolly and consider it to be Jolly. I have to play off the fact that it's probably Adamant. If it is Adamant, then I have no business switching, uh, as it'll just basically KO my entire team after Stealth Rock. So that's how weak my team is at Braviary when I don't bring Bronzong, but Bronzong really was bad, especially in terms of the Scizor department. So anyways, I do stay in, and he turns out to be Jolly. So we did get a max roll. Uh, with the first Brave Bird, which is a little bit unfortunate. I do lose my Aerodactyl. The reason I might have switched earlier is if I got the chance to spin with my Starmie, I could have roosted up with Aerodactyl versus, uh, I guess maybe versus the Arcanine, as the most he could probably do is Extreme Speed, uh, and that most likely would not take me out <laughs> at that range of health. Even 25% is probably enough, especially considering I have some defense investment. That was just my thought process there, but unfortunately we're not able to uh, pull that off and we do lose Aerodactyl. Now I go into my Sylveon as it's the only thing on my team that can reasonably take a hit from this, and uh, I'm going to force him out. I do just go straight for the Wish as if I can stall him out of, like, out of recoil damage, that'd be wonderful, but he does make the good play and switch here. Go for the Hidden Power Fire in case he is a slow Scizor, or not necessarily slow, but in case he's not a U-turn Scizor or as it makes a lot of sense for him to click Bullet Punch or SD on that turn, and Hidden Bower Fire puts him in the range of Lucario, as I was mentioning before. And I do just go for the Hidden Bower Fire, I get 16% off on the Needle Queen. I'm going to go straight into my Lucario, and because he is a Leftovers, or Black Sludge, Black Sludge Needle Queen, he actually is not in range of my Ice Punch here. So, I guess I should have brought Earthquake. That's what happens whenever you <laughs> make a change last minute, I guess. But Latios was such a big threat, he didn't even bring Latios, so I don't even know. But uh, here, I have to go straight into my Venusaur to scout for Flamethrower, because he's not in guaranteed range of Ice Punch. I think there was a chance I could kill, but I wasn't going to take that risk whenever I really need Lucario to help take on the Greninja. 
offensively. So I'm going to go straight into my Mega Venu, fire off a Leech Seed uh, on the incoming Braviary, and hoping he goes for Brave Bird, he actually goes for U-Turn. Hoping he goes for Brave Bird to go into my Sylveon so I can get more chip on him. He's playing with that Bra that Braviary really well, so you know, props to him for that, but uh, I really didn't prep adequately for Scarf, but you can't, you literally cannot prep for everything with this matchup, and that's that's the problem. Uh, it's a very, tr it's a tough matchup for both of us. I wouldn't say it's a good matchup for either of us, but it's very tough. It requires some guessing, essentially, in the prep department, and I kind of guessed incorrectly this week, unfortunately, and a very bad time to do it. Here, I make a little bit of a potential misplay and going into my uh, Mega Venu, but it turns out I actually outspeed this thing, so I got really lucky on that for sure. Uh, that was not a smart play of my end to potentially sack this off, but fortunately, I do outspeed this thing. I'm able to get myself back up to full health, as here's my game plan. So, here, I am at 99%. Scarf, or Scarf Jolly Braviary cannot Oko me from this range, but I think he's still going to click it. So, uh, if he clicks Brave Bird, I go for Sludge Bomb, he is actually going to take me down to about 5-10%, to 10 which unfortunately is in range of Stealth Rock, but I actually can heal up on the Nidoqueen and potentially on the Hitmontop as well, so that's not the worst thing in the world uh, if I'm brought down that low. I just need to get rid of Stealth Rock. So, that, I'm thinking he's just going to click Brave Bird and put me in range of Stealth Rock. I thought that was his game plan. But, uh, he, again, makes a really nice play and goes for U-Turn. So, Carney's playing very well in this game. I cannot be mad about that at all, as he's playing very well. And I go for the Sludge Bomb, as I said before, and it does nothing. If this were not a Black Sludge Nidoqueen, I'd be in great shape right now, honestly, because this thing would be super weakened in range of Lucario, and the combination of Lucario and Venusaur could really start putting in a lot of work, but the fact that he's Black Sludge plus Scarf Braviary is just not something I prepared enough for, unfortunately. But, uh, let's see, here he goes into the uh, Scizor, as again I go for the Synthesis, knowing I need to be at full health to deal with the Braviary. And here I make somewhat of a misplay, maybe, I don't know. It, I can't really predict this thing to be slower than Mega Venu, because it really doesn't require much speed in order to outspeed me, but it does make sense, kind of, that he wanted to be slower than me, but then again, like if I'm packing HP Fire, which I am, then that just, I don't know, I expected him to be slower, or to be faster, go for U-turn into Braviary, and I hit him with the Leech Seed, I'm able to wall with the Sylveon again, but uh, he's slower than me, so this doesn't really work out too well, as I get a Leech Seed on, and he's able to U-turn right on out, and that's uh, not very effective, so here he's into Braviary, and I'm forced to sack, uh, as I can't go Sylveon, as I need Sylveon to not lose to Greninja. Well, I guess that's not really the reasoning, but I can't really go Sylveon because I'll get to a KO'd even with the uh, even with the Protect, so that's not really too ideal. And Venusaur wasn't really getting me very far in this game anyways, as the Nidoqueen was Black Sludge. So here, again, I make a couple interesting plays as, uh, well, you already saw him go for the Brave Bird and kill off my Starmie. So I go into Starmie, and I click T-Wave, as he's either going to stay in, click Brave Bird, or is going to go into Greninja. I don't expect him to switch into anything else. So T-Wave was my play, as if I go for T-Wave, and then... Then I'm able to get a full paralysis on the following turn. I'll be able to get rid of Stealth Rocks, get rid of Braviary, and still have a Starmie alive. That was basically the game plan, as I'm very, very behind right now. Very behind. And I have to essentially play to those odds, as this thing is such a huge threat. I could just take it out with a Scald, and then what? He goes into Greninja. If he has Gunk Shot, Scald plus Gunk Shot will take out my Sylveon, so there's not much I can do there. So I have to go for the Parahax and see if I can, uh, you know, get a little Justice Hacks after this miserable season. But unfortunately, that does not come to fruition and I do lose my Starmie here to the Braviary as well. So now it's definitely in range. Now here, I'm going to go into my Lucario, as the only way I have a chance of coming back to this game is if I can lure in the, uh, lure in the Nidoqueen here. So if he goes into Nidoqueen, then he's most likely to click Flamethrower. Then I can go straight into my Darm, and then I get a free something off against this team. I probably click Rock Slide, honestly, uh, on the incoming Arcanine, because I need to make plays in order to get back in this game. So if I can make that series of doubles and then the prediction to Arcanine, I'm actually back in a good spot, because then the Nidoqueen is currently at... Is it going to show me what Nidoqueen's currently at? I think it's at like 70 or 80. I guess it's not going to show me. But it's in range of a Flare Blitz from my Darmanitan. I calc that mid-battle. It's in range of a Flare Blitz at this point. Uh, one more round of Black Sludge means it is not. But uh, at this point, it is in range, I believe, if it's at 80%, which it should be. Um, so if I'm able to deal damage to the Arcanine on the incoming switch and then get up a bulk up on the following turn, then, um, yeah, he just starts losing Pokemon at that point. So, uh, that was the game plan here, but it goes Hitmontop instead. So, this is where him bringing Hitmontop, which I 100% did not expect, considering both Venu and Sylveon, and even Starmie, Wallet. Uh, so, I really don't understand the Hitmontop bring, but I guess it worked out pretty well for him here, as he's able to go into that, 
and he's going to be able to force me out into my Sylveon, as I'm not going to take a Mach Punch. Uh, I also want to maintain my Balloon just so I can switch into Need a Queen decently well uh, if push comes to shove, but really I'm super behind right now, so it's really, really hard to get my my foot set again, as now I pull the double, expecting the Need a Queen, but it's too late because he's going to be able to get the Black Sludge Recovery up to the point where he's not quite in range. I'm still going to go for Flare Blitz. Maybe I'll get lucky and get a crit, maybe get a burn, but he does make the good play and switch here. I probably could have gone for the Rock Slide, but because he was uh, on the upper end of the range, I didn't want to risk him, I guess, staying in and killing me as uh, I wanted to go for it, basically. I just wanted to go for the kill there. Maybe I'd be able to get it before he gets out of range. But I uh, go for the bulk up. Obviously, he's going to be super prepared for it this time as he has both Toxic and Roar on this. So, again, nice prep on his part. Uh, he really won the guesses, essentially, in the prep department in this game, it seems. But here, I'm Roared into my Lucario. I don't, I'm, don't think I'm guaranteed to outspeed this given my rolls against the Arcanine, but I think I should. And as you can see, I do, can do a ton to the Hitmontop here, which is nice. But again, I'm forced to switch out into my uh, into my Darmanitan, as I figured he'd pull a double into his Nidoqueen, expecting my Sylveon, which would basically net him a free kill. But he stays in, which I don't know if I really agree with that, but when he's this far ahead, I guess he really doesn't have to make predictions. I'm just trying to get him uh, to make those predictions that put me in a good spot. But here he makes a nice play. He goes into his uh, Arcanine. I don't really, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if it was the best play personally, because then if I just went for an attack, I could have gotten rid of this Arcanine, which would have made my job a lot easier. But uh, that's the play he made, so it worked out for him. <laughs> and... Uh, now, let's see, now I'm going to wish up, pass to Darm, as that's essentially free at this point, unless he roars, which he does. And I'm roared into my Lucario, which kind of sucks, but here I'm expecting the fire move. I don't think he's revealed his fire move yet, but it's either Flare Blitz or Flamethrower, or Fire Blast, Fire Spin, I don't know what he's going to do, but I'm going to go into Sylveon anyways. Turns out to be Flamethrower, and, uh, this, yeah, I, I eat it up, which is good, but... I can't do anything, <laughs> so um, you know, I'm actually going to start speeding this up as it's really pretty trivial at this point from here on out. I'm just trying to get him to choke, and I cannot find my opening through the choke, so uh, yeah, I guess I'll just go ahead and cut the narration there. So uh, this will be a loss, unfortunately, and the Toronto Staraptors will not advance to the Season 5 Finals of the NPL, which is really painful to say, but I don't feel that it's because of this battle. Um, it comes down to the streak in the middle of the season where I lost three in a row. It also comes down to Air Balloon, <laughs> the Air Balloon Scandal Week 3 or whatever. Uh, all of those losses, I would go as far as saying all of those losses, those being versus Togue, versus Dylan, potentially, Gypsy King, potentially. Uh, he's very, very good late game, so I'm not going to say I guarantee would have won that game minus the hacks, but... I was in a very good position considering what he said he would have done if I was not paralyzed <clears throat> with my Sylveon in that game. So there's two games I think I probably would have and could have won. Then there's the game versus Dallas where I definitely, I, I say I definitely would have won based upon prep in that game. My prep was very good that game and Venusaur got crit and that was game essentially because Venusaur was so important. So there's three games I should have won and then my game against Razor in week 10 or whatever, uh, I lost to Regigigas and that's just a hack space Pokemon so again I don't really consider that legitimate either and I don't know it's it's that combination it's that combination of four games that put me in this position to where I had to beat this team that's so hard to beat twice uh, that's that's why I really do like this draft so props to Rob on drafting this team because it really was a very good team and I didn't really expect to beat it twice going into the season either that's why I didn't want to be in this position I never want to play on the last week of the season to try to secure a playoff spot as it's just very, very hard, especially in this league, because last last week you just saw against Aberforth, it was hard for him to beat me twice, because we both know each other so well by the second time around. Granted, our teams changed a lot, which did mitigate this effect a little bit, but when you see this similar matchup twice in three weeks, it's nearly impossible to win both, unless you severely outplay your opponent or severely outprep your opponent. I really wasn't in a position to outplay because of Carney's prep this game. So, uh, again, full credit to him for the win. I'm not salty whatsoever about this game. I am upset over the sequence of events that happened in the middle of the season and week three. Uh, and obviously, at this point, there's not much I can do about that. This hurts a little bit because I feel like I'm better than a non-playoff team, uh, as I believe I'm the only non-playoff team with a positive differential, so that says something as well. But it is what it is, and uh, I will enjoy, thoroughly enjoy, my break from Pokemon here until Gen 7 comes out, as I have been craving that for quite a while. But 
during the off season for me, of course, I'm going to enjoy the playoffs as well and support all my friends who are playing here in the off season or the postseason rather. But during my off season, I will be focusing on drafting with the elites. So as you can see, uh, just a couple days ago, we did finally post episode three of that. So I hope you did uh, watch that and enjoy. And if not, then I'll try to remember to leave a link to it in the description below. If I don't, just go to our channel page, and I'm sure it's right there in the recent videos. So that's something I, I would recommend checking out, as that is where my effort is going to go as far as YouTube is concerned during the off season, uh, I might throw out another Smash video here or there, but you know there wasn't a whole lot of positive reception on the first one, so I might not really continue with that either unless I just feel like uploading one for, for kicks. Um, but that's about all I have to say, I suppose. But thanks for watching and following me throughout the season. I know it wasn't really the type of season for me that many of my supporters have come to expect, and I do apologize for that. But I wanted to give a bulky offense to balance team, more bulky offense to even semi-stall to an extent, team one more chance in the format for Gen 6, as I know it's turning into a very offensive meta. Look at the team that Carney brought. This is the definition of a team that works in this meta, because it has some bulky stuff, but all of it can be used offensively as well. I have things like Mega Venusaur, which really struggles to be used offensively in this meta. It's good offensively against defensively oriented teams, but against I guess it's kind of good against offensively oriented teams, but its coverage really isn't cutting it uh, for me in this metagame. That said, that doesn't necessarily mean that that will also be the case whenever Gen 7 draft format comes out, which will be the generation that we're playing in for the next season of the NPL, and I will of course be returning as a coach then despite this miserable season for me. But, um, you know, it is what it is. And uh, this this draft this season was kind of eh, not my favorite, probably my least favorite draft I've actually had, uh, despite the fact that I really, I, I found a liking for Darmanitan. So <laughs> uh, I'm probably, I probably will be drafting Darmanitan in the future. Uh, and Sylveon is okay. I think Clefable is the fairy, <laughs> the fairy of choice. And uh, I very well might draft Clefable again next time around just kind of depends on the team structure that I'm going for which I'm already thinking about a little bit admittedly. Starmie was also pretty cool uh, pretty cool mon to use this season as a nice spinner very reliable I found uh, definitely a better Pokemon than people give it credit for in my opinion as it's really quite versatile uh, despite the fact that it unfortunately cannot run physical moves outside of rapid spin <laughs> uh, properly but it's still a pretty good mon I wish it's offensive capabilities like analytic sets were more viable I think it would be more viable if my draft was more viable <laughs> I, I wish it was more possible for me to run offensive analytic Starmie on my type of team but because I'm leaning on Sylveon Venusaur to keep my team afloat I found myself having to run natural cure on Starmie and run more defensive sets to make sure I can spin and reliably be around to spin again later as I'm having to switch so much with my team that it's really important to keep Starmie alive so that's why I wasn't really able to bring too many offensive Starmie sets while I had it uh, but you know you live and learn and I have learned that in this meta balance to very bulky just very bulky balance is not the way to go and uh, take my advice on that all of you out there who might be wanting to try a draft like what I just had this season it's not the way to go at least against high level competition it is not the way to go I don't really know uh, how that might be in some other leagues but in the NPL not gonna work <laughs> so I will be adapting for next season for sure and I'll be trying to more model what I put together in season four when I had a lot of success so yeah I think that's all I really have to say in terms of a postseason talk uh, yeah, it stings a little bit still, as the battle really just concluded not too long ago, so it's it's very fresh, but uh, like I said, I'll enjoy my break, and thanks again for watching me this season, guys, and I'll see you all in Season 6, or I'll see you in Drafting with the Elite if you want to follow that, uh, if you want to continue to listen to my sexy voice until the next NPL season, that's the place to find me, so we will see you there, thanks again, guys, and have a good one. Peace.